One of the most frequently asked questions about free motion quilting is, how do I start and stop? Keep watching and I'll show you three tried and true methods. Hey guys, welcome back to Francis Quilts. My name is Francis Arnold and I have been quilting for almost 40 years. And for 35 or so of those, I have been doing free motion quilting. Needless to say, I absolutely love doing it. Now, as I have taught and spoken to people about free motion quilting, there have been a few questions that have been foremost in their minds. So I'm going to start a new series of videos over the next few months that are called FAQs for FMQ, Frequently Asked Questions for Free Motion Quilting. Today we're going to tackle how do you start and stop. It's something I could never find anybody that would teach me. So over the years I've learned several different ways and I want to show those to you. Let's go to the machine. Okay, when you're starting a line of machine quilting, the first thing that I want you to do is to make sure that both of your threads, your bottom thread and your top thread, are pulled to the top of the fabric. We want to start with both threads on top. If you leave that bobbin thread dangling at the bottom, it's going to get all messed up and you're going to have thread nests and all sorts of issues. We don't want that. So the easiest way to fix that is to bring that thread to the top. Let me show you a way to do that. Alright, for purposes of this tutorial, we are going to be assuming that this is a seam line and this is a seam line and we are going to be quilting from one end to the other. So anytime we get ready to start, we're going to start up here. Anytime we get ready to end, we're going to end down here. So now let's talk about uh, pulling that bottom thread to the top. It's very easy and most of you probably already know how to do it, but let's just go through it one time. I'm going to place my needle over the place that I want to start my stitching and I'm going to put my needle down. Then holding onto this thread, let me bring it back around front here, holding onto this thread, I'm going to bring my needle up and you see as I start pulling away, you see that bobbin thread starting to come up. Then I can come back in here and put my needle back down in that exact same spot again, right there, and I'm ready to stitch. Now what I like to do is to take these threads and just kind of move them to the back as much as I can. I will often put a finger on there just to hold it in place because this way I know what the, where these are and what they're doing and that's the most important thing. All right, the first way that I'm going to show you to start and stop is to back into the stitches so that we're going to, to uh, overstitch. We're going to back up to our stitching and then we're going to overstitch what we just did. When we get to the bottom, we're going to stitch to the end and then we're going to back stitch over it. Let me show you how that's going to work. All right, we're ready to stitch. We're going to back up to where we wanted to start our line of stitching and then we're going to come forward crossing over those stitching, that stitching again. Now we can come down here, when we get to where our, our stitching stops, we are going to then back up over those stitches that we just made. Let's have a look at it and see the good and the bad of this. As you can see here, those stitches are well secured. They are not going to come out. However, there is some overstitching here and a little bit of thread buildup that you can see. Now, if you were using this on a uh, pattern fabric, something that had a lot of movement to it, you're not going to notice that. Obviously, on this where I'm using basically a solid fabric with a darker thread, you are going to notice that. So this works well in many situations, but there's one problem. Let me show you. Okay, we're ready to stitch again. We're going to stitch back to where we wanted to start our line of stitching. And then we're going to come forward. Let's get back down to here. Let's do the same thing. Let me get those threads out of the way. Let's look at what happened. You can see here, I'm very close up here, but I did not stitch exactly over those stitches. So those stitches are not going to be locked in place well. Same thing here. I'm right beside it and then I get out of the way, you know, go off track a little bit there, but those stitches are not going to be locked in place properly because I did not stitch directly over them. And also, let's face it, this doesn't look very good. This one isn't too bad because they're pretty close, but that's one of the problems that you have with 
doing this kind of starting and stopping. So the way that I use is one where I start my stitching with itty bitty 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 stitches. I'm not stitching up and down in the same hole. I don't want to do that. I want to use little bitty stitches. And in doing so, that's going to lock those stitches in place. And you know how I know that? Because I have had to rip out stitches that were teeny, 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 weeny. And they were horrible. They were really hard to do. So I know that it's going to keep those stitches locked in place. All right, as I said, this is my preferred method. I'm just going to start with my needle on the line that I'm gonna start my stitching from. I'm going to make uh, several very small stitches, just for maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe up to half an inch. And then I'm gonna start doing regular size stitching until I hit my line down here. I'm about a quarter of an inch away from that line and I'm gonna start making little teeny stitches again. Let's look at that one. You can see that that pretty much looks perfect. You can't see any thread buildup along there. You can't tell that I have done anything different to lock those stitches in place. All right, there's one more way that I want to show you. And this is what I use when I am trying to do a quilt for a show. Um, if I'm thinking that it may be entered in one of the big shows, I don't want to have my stitching showing badly. I don't want the quilting to look bad. So I am going to bury my threads. Let me show you how I do that. Great. So now I'm ready to stitch a line where I'm going to tie these stitches off and bury them. Uh, I have my thread tails a little bit longer than normal and I'm just going to start stitching. I'm not taking any small stitches. I'm not backing up. I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to start stitching. Okay. I'm at the end of my stitching. Now the problem I have is that I have to be able to bring that bobbin thread up so that I can bury it off. Let me show you an easy way to do that. And this works great as well if you're in the middle of a quilt and you don't want to have to climb under there to, uh, to cut the stitches or something. This works equally as well in that situation. So I'm going to bring my needle up. I'm going to take my entire piece and I'm going to pull it forward and then let it come back. And when it's coming back, I'm going to grab a hold of that, that uh, thread. I may even give it a little bit of slack in there. I'm going to come back down and I'm going to put my needle down in the exact position that it came out of. I'm going to go down one time and back up. Now look what happens. You see that bobbin thread coming up right there? So now if you look, I have three different threads here that I'm holding. I'm holding two uh, bobbin threads right there and I'm holding one top thread. Now for purposes of tying off I want these these to be long enough that I can tie them so I'm going to come here to the very end where I've, I've got a good amount of the bobbin thread and the top thread there and I'm going to just cut like that. So now I still have two bobbin threads coming out. One of those is going to go away when I uh, move to another area. So now I just have the two threads here right there and right there. So now I'm ready to tie these off and I like to use this particular tool. It is called a Snag Magic needle. Um, you can buy them from snagmagic.com. You can also find them on Amazon, but I will warn you that those are knockoffs. Uh, you don't get the same quality. Some of them, they have little bitty loops here rather than the bigger loop and that bigger loop is something that you need. So I'd encourage you to check out snagmagic.com to buy these wonderful tools. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a top thread and a bobbin thread and we're going to tie a knot in it. One and two. Now this knot is sitting on top of the, the fabric right there. So now I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to put it in exactly where those stitches came out and I'm just sliding it through the batting and coming out some other direction down here. Now all I have to do, let me pull it out a little bit further. Now all I have to do is grab these two threads and pull them through that loop and then I can do this, give this a tug, and you cannot see where that, that um, thread was tied off because do it, giving the tug pops that, that knot in underneath the top fabric and now it is nice and secure. Now let's tie off this last one as well. So I'm going to do my knot again. One and two. I'm going to take my needle and insert it right here where, I, where I've come out. I'm going to come under in between these fabrics. You can see the needles out there. If I want it to go a little bit further, I can bring it down a little bit further. I'm going to take these two threads and 
put them in that that uh, knot or in sorry in that loop right there and give it a pull and a tug and now that is almost invisible that's what we're looking for and just one final thing here I want to encourage you to make use of this area on your quilt where you just have batting and backing fabric let's say that uh, the edge of this quilt you know I'm going to be putting my my binding on right here and let's say I wanted to stitch some lines up this direction or something like that on the quilt itself what I would do here is I would start off in this this area down here I'm going to still pull my thread to the top because I want to get it out of the way so I don't get it stuck in there but when I came back and started stitching I would use this area to secure my stitches so if I've taken you know seven or eight stitches then I've secured that area and then I can just jump up on the quilt and do whatever I needed to do whether I was coming here and doing something like this let's say that the next stitch I was going to do was going to be right down here and I didn't want to have to do that entire line I could jump off travel along that area and come back on make it as easy as possible so that's pretty much all I know about starting and stopping with machine quilting I hope you've learned something new so there you have it three different ways to start and stop your stitching each one of them will work in different areas or at different times and all three worked great so I hope you learned something new I hope you found some techniques that will help you with your free motion quilting and I'd love to answer your questions if you have a burning free motion quilting question please leave it in the comments I'd love to see it and think about it and be able to answer it for you that's it for today thanks so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you next time on Francis quilts remember if you like what you've seen be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe Please check out my website and daily blog at francisquilts.com and I can be found on Facebook and Instagram at Francis Quilts. Thanks so much for joining me. Hope to see you again soon.